Good afternoon and welcome to Position Sizing, my take on the markets. It's October 19, 2010, and before we begin, I caution you to invest at your own risk. I don't share in your profits, so I don't share in your losses. Today I want to talk about certain double time symmetries that occur at the end of major moves. I will be using my homemade advanced decline momentum oscillator. For more information on that oscillator, please see the video that I made on October the 3rd. So here's the observation. At the end of a major up cycle, if you connect the first and last major spike lows in the oscillator, you get a good idea of the end of the up move. Normally, low to low equals low to another low. Here, however, low to low equals low to high, or more properly, low to the end of the up move. Conversely, if you connect the first and ma uh, last major spike highs in, a, in the oscillator during a downtrend, you get a good target for the end of the downtrend. So instead of high to high equals high to another high, you have high to high equals high to low, or end of the down move. I call these double T's because instead of a, a one to one time symmetry, they exhibit a two to one time symmetry. So let's review some examples on the S&P 500. The chart you're looking at shows uh, my momentum oscillator on the bottom with the S&P price on the top. You'll note that in August of 1999 the oscillator spiked down and made a multi-month low. In February, late February of 2000 is the actual lowest oscillator reading on the chart. If you um, cycle those out you get an end date in early September. Now we're moving to the 2002-2003 low. In March of 2002 the oscillator spiked down and made a multi-month low. I'm sorry, a multi-month high. And then in August of 2002 uh, made its second major oscillator high. And if you cycle that out it projected an end to the move in early February. Moving on to the 2007 high in March of 2007, the oscillator spiked and made a multi-month low. Starting your T there and using the center post at the July 7th ultimate low on the oscillator produced a mid-December target date for the end of this move. Note that this correlates perfectly with my interpretation of the T12 end date. For more information on that, please see the T12 video that I made last week. Now we're looking at the 2008-2009 low, and you'll note in November 2008 the oscillator spiked and made a multi-month high, and then in January 2009 made its highest high, and if you cycle those two highs out you projected the end date of that down move exactly on March the 9th. Finally, uh, in examining the April 2010 high, you'll note a multi-month spike low in the oscillator in October of 2009, and the next major spike low in the oscillator was in January of uh, 2010. You cycle these out, you project an end to the move in late April. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. That's it for today. Until next time, happy trading.